the new processors are here, and guess what? They use socket LGA 1151, and they're backwards compatible this time. That got your attention? Good. Keep watching for more information on the new 7700K and 7600K KB Lake processors. So the big question everyone always asks is, should you get the new generation of processors? Whether you're upgrading an existing system or building a new one from scratch, it's hard to resist the allure of all the fancy new shiny features that they advertise. Well, for once, the answer is actually pretty simple. First of all, that introduction wasn't just clickbait. The new KB Lake i7-7700K and i5-7600K, along with all the other processors in the new lineup, will be fully backwards compatible with supported LGA 1151 motherboards. It does require a BIOS firmware update, so there's no telling which exact models will be updated, but it's a good bet that most Z170 or Z170 boards will be supported. However, if you want to get the most out of your new processor, you're going to want to get a new Z270 or Z270 chipset motherboard as well. I'm just keep saying Z270 for the rest of this video. Let's start by talking about the TikTok model. I'm sure you heard of it before, but as a refresher, Intel usually releases new processors every 12 to 18 months, and it goes in a TikTok pattern, like a clock. Every tick represents shrinking down the previous generation of microarchitecture, while every talk represents a whole new microarchitecture. The previous tick was Broadwell, which took the 22 nanometer fabrication process of Haswell and shrunk it down to 14 nanometers. The next talk was Skylake, which used the same 14 nanometer fabrication process to create a new microarchitecture. KB Lake, however, doesn't quite fall in either category. It's more of a refresh or optimization of Skylake. It uses the same 14 nanometer process while offering high clock speeds at the same TDPs as before. The i7-7700K now comes with a base clock of 4.2 GHz and a maximum turbo boost of 4.5 GHz, while the i5-7600K comes in at a 3.8 GHz base and a 4.2 GHz turbo boost. These numbers are interesting because they're pretty similar to what most people could easily achieve with an overclocked Skylake. So does that mean a KB Lake processor is just an overclocked Skylake? Nope. In fact, it scales even higher. Coincidentally enough, both our samples overclocked to 5 GHz, both cooled with a Corsair H100i V2. The 7600K actually had room to overclock even higher, but it was throttling itself since we hit our temperature threshold. With some more time tweaking and an even beefier cooler, you should be able to go even higher. We didn't even receive cherry-picked samples either. These are retail chips randomly selected from our inventory. So in short, the new i7 is 7% faster than the previous one's stock and 11% faster when overclocked, while the i5 is 8% faster at stock and 9% faster when overclocked. We started our testing with Cinebench R15, which showed direct linear scaling between processor clock speed and score. And since Skylake and KB Lake share the same architecture, it's safe to say that other benchmarks will show similar levels of scaling. If you're looking for more detailed benchmarks, check out sites like Hardware Canucks or Anontech, who go way more in depth than we could ever fit into a six minute video, or however long this video ends up being. And that leads us back to the original question. Should you buy into the new generation of processors? Well, if you're building a new system from scratch, then the answer is yes. For the same MSRP as Skylake, you're getting more speed and lower temperatures. If you currently have a Skylake system, then it's a bit tougher. For most people, we'd say it isn't worth the upgrade unless you want to take advantage of Intel Optane. While we haven't seen any real examples of storage using 3D crosspoint technology yet, Intel is promising something that is up to a thousand times faster than NAND-based storage. I'll believe it when I see it, but you have to admit, Intel's PCIe-based NVMe drives were fast and lived up to their promises. Along with Optane, motherboard manufacturers have a whole host of new features as well. The board we use for testing, the MSI Z270 Gaming M7, features a dedicated high amperage fan header for use with water cooling pumps, USB 3.1 Generation 2, which supports a maximum speed of 10 gigabit per second, a header for connecting generic type 5050 LED strips, a U.2 connector, and a built-in heatsink for keeping M.2 drives cool. Now, we know those features aren't exclusive to KB Lake, but they are representative of the type of features you'll find standard on the next gen Z270 chipset. And 
And finally, one last thing to keep in mind, Intel announced that KB Lake drivers will support Windows 10 only. We're not quite sure what the implications mean since most of your drivers have to do with your motherboard and graphics card anyways. But if you're one of the few people out there that actually understands what the Intel management engine interface is and absolutely requires it, then I hope you planned on using Windows 10. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this cleared up any confusion you may have had between KB Lake and Skylake. Click here for previous videos, check us out on Twitter over here, but as always like the video, comment down below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. We'll see you later.